Hello, QST readers and ARRL members worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, author of the column Ask Dave. This is a video to accompany the March edition of uh, the QST column. Now, in that edition, I talked about how it is possible to uh, bring back to life some crimped coaxes. I mentioned the difficulties of uh, soldering standard connectors. So I thought what we'd do for this video is actually solder a standard connector. This is a short piece of uh, RG8X. Okay, it's ancient, but it'll do. And uh, what I'm going to do on this is solder this connector which is a standard UHF plug, uh, usually called a PL259. Okay, and it screws on like that and then it can go and uh, push right into the uh, connector. Now these things screw off like this. Now the problem with uh, um, RG8X is that you need to use an adapter. So you put the adapter on here, and we're going to peel away at what's inside of here. And then we're going to put this on here, solder the tip on it, and uh, then solder the braid. Now you see here, there are little holes in there. That's your access to the braid. Okay, and that's what you have to solder through. Now what I have for a soldering iron is my soldering station with its heaviest tip. The reason I want the heavy tip is because this will absorb a lot of heat and will stay hot after I touch this to the coax connector. Okay, so we can transfer the maximum amount of heat. And this is not on right now yet. Now, another thing I'm going to do, I've got a little can of flux. This one happens to be an old uh, Radio Shack uh, can of flux. Uh, it's, uh, it says rosin soldering flux. But you can get a can like this down at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's by uh, asking around in their electrical section. Uh, you will find two kinds, uh, acid core and rosin core. Sometimes the rosin core will be labeled electrical flux. But that's what you want. You don't want the acid core. The acid core will eat everything up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is the one that's missed the most. We're going to put this connector shell. Note that we're going to have the threads here. And we're going to put this so that that's the side with the threads right there. Okay, and then we're going to put the adapter on it in this manner, okay? Now, normal, now I've got a real short coax run, but what I'm gonna do is run some tape around this so that uh, it'll pretend like it's a real long uh, piece of coax and won't, won't fall off, Let's see? Yeah, okay. Now, I cannot tell you how many times I have soldered the adapter and the connector without this. Now, this is called in the ARRL handbook. Uh, I'm using this figure. This figure is, um, let's see, I think 22 uh, in the chapter about connectors and so on. And it shows how to attach a PL259 with an adapter. Okay, and we're going to follow the instructions on that. Okay, so the first thing we do is put that over that. This is called the coupling ring. This is called the adapter. We're just going to leave them out of the way. If you go ahead and solder this part on, guess what? You're going to have to unsolder it and then put these on so that they will attach to this. Now, if we look at the instructions here, I'll put them up on the uh, screen here. Item number one, cut the end of the cable even. Well, it's fairly even. Remove the vinyl jacket three 
quarter inch don't nick braid slide coupling ring and adapter on cable i will tell you right now it is easier to slide the coupling ring and adapter on here first before you cut this now we're going to measure um with this thing right here we're going to measure three quarters of an inch we don't want millimeters we want inches so we want oh that's i got that one wrong okay we want three quarters of an inch which is seven five it's got 93 128 says so 7.5 okay there is three quarters of an inch now, i'm actually going to make this just a little bit long because I always do, because it's just gonna stick out the end and I can cut it off. So what I'm going to do is take this spot right here and slice around it. So let me do this. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And we're gonna take a look at this. So what I'm going to do is take a knife and I'm just going to very gently press the knife, kind of rolling it back and forth into the cable until I get all the way through the rubber. Okay, there. You see how we've got a little bit of the braid? We don't want to nick the braid. We're going to keep doing this. This just takes patience. Not my long suit. Note that I'm holding this finger such that if this slips past, I won't cut my finger. So here's what we have. We have this um, back here. Um, and I'll show it on the screen. We're going to fan the braid slightly and fold back over the cable. So we're going to, now this is a little weird to do. Okay, I want you to watch closely. We're going to fold this back. Note how it bows. Fold it back and fold it back until you get it back over the cable like that. Now we don't need all of that. In fact, we don't want all of that. See, this thing is going to come up here underneath this. Till it gets to the top here. And this excess braid down here is going to get into into the fitting on the cable. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a pair of scissors and pull that out. Now note that these little tiny pieces of copper wire can be very pesky. So it's a good idea to make sure that you clean your area very well of them. Okay. There we go. We've got this thing over like this. Now what we're going to do is put this up here like this, okay? And now we need to take off. We need to leave about an eighth of an inch here. And then we will clear the rest of that. So let's take our, our tool. And put this in here about here and you see in there we're left about an eighth of an inch now we're in good shape okay so this goes up underneath here all the way to the top underneath and then I'm gonna kind of wind this a little bit like this and then we're going to put on this is the actual 
let's see what they call it, adapter, and this is the plug assembly. Now we don't want any of this wire to come back and touch this. So one thing we could do here is tin that so that it won't bend back. All right, we're going to tin this center conductor. If we tin it, that means that a piece of it can't fold back on itself here. When you have a temperature controlled soldering iron and it says it's up to temperature, that temperature is actually the temperature right here. Not the temperature out at the tip. It takes a moment for the heat to get out there. Now let's just tin this. Well, tinning just means putting solder on it. As you get older, this gets a little harder to do. Okay. That now holds that thing together. And yes, that's hot, so don't tell you. I'm going to hold that with that. And with this, I'm going to turn this. We only need a couple more turns. There. Okay. Whoops. No. Look at that. See the distance right there? Okay. Let's try again. Okay, now it's all the way up there. Now let's take a look at what we want to take a look at here. Okay, this, the adapter is all the way in, and we've got our wires out, okay, and we've got solder holes, and we need to put solder in those holes before we put this on. Note that if you forgot to put this on, you're gonna have to uh, take this all apart, put that on. This is a good time to check. This is also a good time to check and make sure that the inner and outer are not shorted to each other. So I'm gonna take my multimeter here and put it on ohms. And let's see. We're going to touch the outer shell and the inner. It says it's in the mega ohm range, okay, which is probably coming from this end down here. Okay, so we're good to go. I'm forever forgetting to turn this off. And every time I do, I waste a 9-volt battery. 9-volt batteries are not cheap. Okay, now to solder this, uh, first we have to solder the inner connector. And once we solder the inner connector, then it'll be more stable, and we'll do that inside connector. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. We're going to solder right there. Okay, now we're going to solder that inside connector. Now, when you solder this inside connector, I want you to make note here that we're going to watch the solder get sucked down into the middle. Okay. Ouch. There's plenty of solder there. And where does it go? It goes down the tube. Now, we need to solder the uh, inside of here 
these things here. Let me put this over and see if we can't do that in such a way that it's visible. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is take a toothpick, put it in the soldering paste, which by the way stinks to high heaven. Okay, this is the rosin core. It's really nasty stuff. I took a toothpick because I really don't want very much. And I'm going to put it, let's see if I can get one that's over where you can see it here. I'm going to put it in here just so a little of that gets into there. All right, and then I'm going to put a little bit in here too. Okay, now I'm going to use the soldering iron and I'm going to put the solder, soldering iron into the hole like this. Okay, and I'm going to hold it there and hopefully if my hands don't shake too much I can get some solder down in that hole. Did any go in? Yes, some went in. Some went in. Let me just do this a little bit more. When it beads up like that, it means it's not actually making any connection. Let's try on the other side. Okay, we've got some wire there. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put a little solder down in the hole. Sorry, I'm just old. I cannot hold that steadily. Okay, and you know, I'm sure an expert can do better than that, but we've got solder there and we've got it there, two places. Okay, and that doesn't look good to me. I wish it were more spread out, but I'm not sure I've got the right equipment to make it do that. That's why I crimp. Okay, let's come back up here. Okay, as I mentioned, this is why I crimp. This was very difficult to get this far. Now I'm going to take a pair of cutting dikes 
right here and cut this extra off the top. Okay, maybe just a little bit more. Okay, so we now have, and we now can screw this connector on up. And we have a PL259 solder connector. Now, how much work was that? That was a lot of work. Okay, and I'm not convinced that this outer braid is making good solid contact with that. I mean, it will now if you, if you check it. You've got some solder in there, but is it really attached to that inner connector? I'm just not certain. Okay, so... Anyway, this is right here. These little holes are the problem in most soldering of coax connectors. It's getting solder in those little holes. You've got a huge piece of metal here that's a wonderful heat sink for your soldering iron. Okay. And I've even commercially built coax of the old type. I never saw much better than that. And for years, these were the kind of coax connectors that I made. Okay, now we have the crimp on connectors, which go much more quickly. And I've done a video on those. You can look that up. But believe me, I will not be hand soldering these connectors on if I can avoid it. Now we did note the problem in the column uh, where if you crimp connectors if the uh, coax uh, outer rubber cover pulls out you'll have a bad connection there. You can take um, something like that right there. Well, let's just look at the household pliers. The household pliers um, have a little hole in them. You can kind of just crimp those back down together so that you have a good connection with the uh, ground wire or the outer shield. Okay, so there you have it. I look forward to seeing you in next month's video. And uh, until then, 73.